Hello, welcome to Faith and Friends. Thanks for spending part of your day with us here on TV44. Jennifer Beck, glad to have her back. Alongside Annie Lynch, I'm Mark Coons. Welcoming you to the last full week of April. Is it already? The last full week of winter, right? <laughs> I've seen snow into the second week of May oh. at Syracuse. Graduation, I think it was my sophomore year, but graduation day, there was snow up at Syracuse University. I don't, I don't even want to think about that. I have been very good. I have never complained all winter, even though I'm not a winter person. But when the snow came in April, I had to bite my tongue. It was gone in like 24 <laughs> hours. I don't care. I don't want to wake up. I had icicles on my van in April. Wow. In Ohio, not Alaska. It's a busy show today. <laughs> we will not complain about the weather anymore. Lots of great information that you will want to stick around for. Our Daily Bread Soup Kitchen recently recognized the many who make the ministry a success. Boy, is that important in our community? We'll take you to that event. Have you written a book or maybe you've been thinking about it? Well, now could be the time. We'll tell you about a national publisher interested in your book submission. And we'll tackle the subject of bullying. A local author talks from his own experiences to make a difference. But before we go to all that, we'll take a look at our scripture for the day, Romans 6, 8 through 11. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Important for us to remember as we are celebrating the risen Savior Easter and the week after Easter, we always want to remember that and savior. Yeah, we don't want it to be a one-day event exactly. like I wrote about my points of life this week or, or a week-long event or a Lenten season event. Are we living like Jesus is alive or is it simply, oh yeah, he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. He came back to life after being dead for three days. That's big news. Imagine if that happened to your friend, you know, this week or today. You would have a completely different mindset. So being alive in Christ, that is what we are Focusing on that is clearly the case at our Daily Bread Soup Kitchen in Lima. And just last week, the Soup Kitchen employees and volunteers took a moment to thank the hundreds who helped keep this incredible organization going. We have over 39 different congregations and churches that come and businesses that, that help volunteer in some way or another and are instrumental in us being able to serve um, what would be 250 some odd days of the year, a meal once a day for people. Those 250 days in the past year amounted to 39,000 individual meals. And just listen to how much, or rather how little, it costs to buy all those ingredients. And we did that amazingly on what would be really food expenditure wise, just about $2,200 because of so much donated product that we were able to take in from different places. And so this recent appreciation banquet was a chance to say thanks. More than 100 volunteers gathered at 125 South Central Avenue in Lima. Lima Senior High School culinary students served the crowd, and Christian singer Hannah Beck provided musical inspiration throughout the evening. Jenkins believes greatly in the purpose of our daily bread soup kitchen and sees it as so much more than just food. But you can come here once a day and you get a full, nutritious, hot meal. No questions asked. I don't ask you what you make based on your eligibility of your income or anything like that. You come through that door, you're here to break bread. You're here to not just be fed here in your stomach, to be fed here in your heart and here in your head and as well as within your soul. That's what this is about. It's always inspiring to hear how incredibly God is working, not just here in Lima, but all over the world. Jennifer introduces us to two men, one from right here in Ohio and the other halfway around the world, both with a unified goal to spread the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Andy. Well, joining me now is Harold Wollenhoff, who lives right here in Elida, and his very good friend, Pastor Bernard Ondiak, who traveled all the way from Kenya to be with us here on Faith and Friends. Gentlemen, I am so honored to have both of you here with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what an incredible story. I have enjoyed talking with these gentlemen so much before we started this interview, just hearing about God's vision through Pastor Bernard, what he has been doing in Kenya since 2004 with hundreds of orphans literally changing their lives. Why don't you give us a very quick recap, Pastor, of uh, your ministry and where it is now with the schools that you have? 
Well, thank you very much. My ministry is um, to make sure that I build a foundation for the little children that their foundation has been broken due to the death of their parents. Actually, this is something very difficult and very hard to know that there are so many orphans in the world today and they don't have shelter, food, they don't have uh, anybody who would just raise their hands and call them to say, I love you. And um, the most important thing I do is just to um, make sure that I pick up these kids and bring them and uh, mold them, first of all, to give them a strong spiritual foundation and academic foundation and emotional foundation. Benner's Vision School is uh, doing this, picking children from the street and also from their uh, homes where they cannot get help. And here is what we're doing. We are giving them food, we are giving them education, we are giving them shelter, and, and we give them hope. So what we are seeing right now are young children uh, who without this opportunity, would they just be on the streets? What would be their future? I, I tell you, uh, some of them uh, would just end up dying. And uh, some of them, uh, when they sniff the glues, they become mad mm. because their minds completely spoiled. That's why I'm, I'm talking of the broken foundation. Mm. They have no hope at all if they cannot get to go to school. This is what is very, very hard for, for me to see. In fact, uh, living in a, a community where people suffer, and you may think uh, uh, you, you do well, it's not easy. I've seen the cry of the children, and this is broke, breaking my heart. And that's why the birth of Benner's Vision School started in 2005. Harold, here we are in the United States, but yeah. we have an opportunity to be, to, to, to be a partner with Pastor Bernard. What would you recommend that we could do as people over here in the United States to help with this situation? Yes, well, I think financial support is the most important thing. And as we learn more about the life in Kenya, it seems like it's uh, almost a hopeful, hopeless situation. Uh, with no uh, constant government uh, oversight or, or any government contributions and any contributions made to Bernard's program goes directly to him. There's no overlying organization that takes anything off the top and everything that's donated gets used in his schools in Kenya. So 100% of right. donations are going directly to this ministry. There's no nothing taking them off the top, which is always yes. a good thing for us to know. It's good yeah, to know where right. the money's going. Right. Financial is one way that we here mm -hmm. in the United States can help. Yes. What are some other ways that we can help? Um, I, I want to tell you that there's several ways. One of the ways is prayer. You know, prayer is very, very important. When Christians pray, things work. Yes. And when God's work is done in godly way, God provides. Mm -hmm. But prayer is the most important thing. But another thing that I want to tell you is, when you just make your time and break you, uh, yourself out of the comfort zone and say, I want to go see what these people are doing, I tell you, when you come and see exactly how the children who have hope are getting, who have no hope are getting hope. You just stretch up your hands and, and, and touch them with the love of Christ. And you see the smile of their face. That, I tell you, will change your life completely. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tell people, support with money, support with prayer. But come see. Come and see what is happening there. It's very important. So when people come and visit, they have an opportunity to teach. Would they also have an opportunity to help with maybe building projects, right. those types of things? Right. When people come, they, they can get involved in classroom work. Or maybe if we have a project of building, they can also help us with the skills that they have. 
and we can go also visit them at their homes and and um, uh, and and see the guardians' homes and also give them uh, encouragement in their homes. We we can also teach them the Bible, the Word of God that would transform their lives completely because our foundation is in Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Amen. amen. That's right. I am amen. excited when I when I hear these stories and recognizing. I mean, right now there are hundreds of hundreds of kids going through these two schools that right. you have. And I think back to 2004 to now and the thousands of kids whose lives not only have been changed educationally, but spiritually. Yes. I mean, imagine the party that's going to be in heaven someday with all of these kids, thanks to your willingness to yes. push forward. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm guessing, Pastor, it hasn't always been easy. Is mm -hmm. that correct? It's not been easy. Um, let, let, let me tell you, man, um, uh, this is a faith ministry because I don't have big organizations where I say, I'm going to take this money and do this work. Every time is a step of faith. Um, I have seen lots of um, good things happening and bad things happening. We, we sometimes run out of, out of food. And sometimes you think, what am I going to do with this case right now? They don't have food, they don't have books, they don't have teachers, and they don't have um, water. So what should I do? Then God tells you, don't be discouraged. I'm with you. I will do it. And then later you see, God provides. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, we, we didn't have classrooms. And we say, what, am I, what are we going to do? Because the, the need is so huge that in 2004 we started with about six children and right now we have 820 children. 820. Going, 20, going through the schools through Bernard's Vision School. Wow. Learning. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, what, what I want to tell you, the great encouragement. These boys and girls are very bright, excellent. We did our national exam last year and the other year 100% pass, and yeah. these kids have to go to high school, to public high schools. So I don't want to cut you off, but yes. we're almost out of time, and I want right. to talk about high school very quickly, yes. because it is time to move them into high school, right. so it's time to build a high school, right? It's time to build a high school right now, and um, because after they, they get to eighth grade, they, they cannot get to go to public high school in Kenya because they pay dearly. It is very, very expensive. Therefore, now what we are praying for is to build a high school within Bernard's Visions campus so that the transition from eighth grade to, to ninth grade would be very easy. Mm. I know that building high school is very expensive. In fact, we budgeted for $250,000, which we do not know where this money will come from. Mm -hmm. But God tells me, Bernard, it, money is there, it's in the pocket of people, <laughs> and uh, I know, uh, let's pray, it's, I'm going to talk to people, don't tell them to give, let me tell them to there give. There you go, <laughs> yes. that's good. So, right, right. that's what you've heard at the high school is what is next on the agenda for this incredible ministry, Bernard's Vision School. If you'd like to know more about this, you've got three websites on your screen there that you can go to, PIEI.org hungryforhim.com and godslittleones.org. You can also call us here at TV44. And I encourage you to get a copy of this book, Bernard's Vision. I haven't finished reading it yet, which means you cannot borrow mine. It's a great book. I've started reading it. It's very amazing to hear how God has been working, how Pastor Bernard was uh, willing to listen to God's heart, which is, of course, always the first key. Uh, I just want to thank both of you gentlemen so much. We could talk for a very long time, I am sure. Hopefully this is not our last opportunity to do that. Um, just my prayers are with you. I, I'm just encouraged and, and so grateful for your support, but for your willingness to move forward. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. May God bless you. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Back to you, Mark. If you're interested in getting a free copy of the book, Bernard's Vision, head to our website, WTLW.com. You can enter, and perhaps you'll get a free copy of the book. Well, speaking of authors, if you're an aspiring author, Zach Bowers has a story of how a local store and a press is looking for you. 
I'm here now with Mike Holsey of Gifts of Joy Parable uh, Gift Store, and we have a contest to talk about, Mike, don't we? It's the Aspiring Authors Writing Contest that the Gifts of Joy and Parable um, group are uh, partnering in. Yes, we do. Uh, Westbow Press, a division of Thomas Nelson and Harper Collins, has created a contest to allow new authors who want to get their book published a chance to do that. Everyone thinks they have a book inside them and they're passionate about it and they're, it's not been easy to get them impressed and now we have a contest that can make it easier to get that done. And what does uh, the contest offer as far as the package go to the winner? The winner gets a full press package, uh, printing and advertising from Westbow and then they also get an advertising package in Parable Catalogs. Okay. And how would one enter, let's say they have a book out there that they have written or maybe they have a book inside them that they'd like to write. How do they enter this contest in order to get published? They can come into the store and pick up a brochure, and then you enter on the website and send them either your full manuscript or your partial manuscript. The way I understand it, you don't have to have the book finished. You just have to have uh, enough rough job that they can tell if it's something that they would want to publish. And is this open to all ages and all authors? Anybody who feels passionate that they have a book inside them that people would want to read can enter. Okay. And talk a little bit about the importance of maybe some amateur aspiring authors and what publishing uh, could mean to them or the importance of that. Well, a lot of times uh, publishers strictly work with authors that are established, and it's hard to break in as a new, a new author. But um, some of the books that have been the most popular have come through authors that were turned down by large publishers, had to find a small publisher to get their book published, and suddenly it became a big hit. So just because it doesn't seem like it's you get your book into a big publisher. It may be a great book that may become a big hit anyway. All right. Well, Mike, thank you for the information. And you heard it. Maybe you do have a book at home. Maybe you've started a book. Or maybe you do just have a book inside of you. Hurry on over to Gifts of Joy to sign up for the Aspiring Authors Writing Contest today. Thanks, Zach. Some special things we want to be sure you're aware of are coming up very soon to the area. First, a couple of concerts. Sojourner Quartet will be the area April 27th. Hallelujah Saints Band May 2nd. Both of those at Faith Baptist Church in Elida. No cost to get into the events, but there will be a free will offering. May 1st, all across the country, is the National Day of Prayer. Among the observances in this area, the annual Allen County Observance will begin at 11.45 a.m., continue until 1 p.m. TV 44 will re-air that service the same night at 8 p.m. Ebenezer Mennonite Church, located just west of Bluffton, will hold their annual National Day of Prayer service at 7 p.m. We encourage you to take part in an event near you and take some time on May 1st to pray for our government leaders in our country. Now, on to the subject of bullying. Dancy Moeller is here with a local author who is working hard to curb this problem. Dancy? Well, bullying is a social issue that we have been hearing a lot about in recent years, and it's probably something that has been with us for centuries, but we're finally addressing the issue and addressing it head on. And joining me right now is Mike Terrian, who has written a book um, about the topic of bullying. And uh, Mike, I am so glad that you could be with us because there are a lot of questions, a lot of arguments that have formed over this entire issue. And um, I'm glad that you could be here to share your experiences. You have written a book called Charlie's Brand New Coat. Yes. You also have a formal initiative called I Will Be the One. Correct. So um, let's talk about why this topic is so near and dear to you. Uh, I was bullied from first grade through seventh grade as a young person. And, um, and it, you know, th over that time, there was a lot of pain that was created. And uh, you, they say that when you're a victim of bullying, you forget the stories, but you never forget the pain. And it was up till about three or four years ago that I was seeing more and more headline news on young people who were taking their lives uh, because they were bullied. And that pain would come back. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really wasn't sure why, but I just, I was angry all over again every time I saw it on the TV or I, I read it in the paper. And so I thought I could either be angry about it and do nothing, or I could, I could do something to help. And so I decided to uh, write a book about some of the events that happened to me so I could get that book into the, in, in the hands of young people. And uh, what I found along the way is I've been invited to several schools and community organizations to, to share my story. And so it's been great so far. That's wonderful. Can you describe or define the word bullying? I think that is where 
people get um, confused and argumentative about whether or not they've been bullied, whether they are the bully, whether their kids are, are suffering. How do you define it? I define bullying as the bully has a motive. He has an agenda. His agenda is to, is to seek and destroy. If it's, if it's either character, it's either morality, um, or the moral of young people, he has an agenda. Uh, I think a lot of us, as we talked earlier about, uh, we've been picked on and, and maybe we've had our feelings hurt and, and I understand that and I think a lot of people would say, yeah, I've, I've had that happen to me. But a true victim of, of bullying feels that pain. He feels that destruction. He feels as though the, the bully is really trying to destroy him. And it could be uh, mentally, emotionally. Uh, now more than ever, it's, it's, it's more physical. Definitely. And as you said, some of this bullying can lead to serious consequences for the victim. Um, sometimes they feel hopeless enough where they feel like they're worth, their life isn't worth anything and they choose to end it. Um, how, how can we convince those who are being bullied that there is a brighter future for them and get beyond this? One thing, the, most, the best thing we can do is tell our young people that every single one of them have, has a brighter tomorrow. I ha and I, the reason why I know that is because of all the research that I've done and the people that I've talked to, I haven't found one person who said it didn't get better for them. I've talked to several hundreds of, of victims of bullying who said it got better. And so I'm confident that these young people who are going through their trials right now, uh, it will get better for them. And so I think as adults, we need to instigate that hope into our young people. We need to on purpose tell them that it will get better. I have to say though that you know our children are at school for a majority of their day and much of this happens right there in school. Are teachers equipped and, and ready and willing to step in and say knock it off to the kids who are, who are doing the picking and the bullying? I think our teachers are equipped and ready. Uh, this is some of the feedback that I have received, um, again, with studying bullying in schools. The curriculum is so demanding. Um, it is, I, I've talked to several teachers who are just overwhelmed with everything that they have to do. And uh, I had one teacher specifically say for every incident that happens at their school, it takes an hour out of their day to do all the paperwork, to do all the stuff that, and I'm not, I'm not saying good or bad, either way, I'm, that's the information that I have received, um, that, that the schools are just overwhelmed. They are just overwhelmed. And I hate to say this, but I've also heard where some of the teachers are the bullies, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do, you, how do you handle something like that when you're a, a fourth grader and you look up to this person as your mentor or your role model or, or authority figure, and they're the ones that are not being very nice? The, our teachers are our haven of hope. They are the place where we should go for safety. And um, as a young person, I had, I had to have a place where I could go for safety. And I had one teacher in mind who was that haven of hope. She was there for me. But uh, as you said, I also had one teacher who, was, who, who did bully me, and for 45 minutes every day in class, he would make fun of me. And it destroyed me, and I failed the class. Um, I had no respect for him. I, had, it was very, I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to go to that class. I, I had no idea what was going to happen to me that day. I wanted no part of it. But as you said, though, you had one person that you could turn to, and that one person is a beacon of light, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and she knew my situation, even though I didn't think she knew it. And, and all it took was a pat on the back. Yes. It took an encouraging word. It took something. And you're right. All of a sudden, I had this glow that I was going to make it through that day because one person came to me and, and, and made me feel wanted, made me feel important. And you just have to believe that, that you are here for a reason. God loves you and puts you on this earth to fulfill a purpose. And you may not see it in the midst of the storm, but you will see it sooner or later if you just hold on. So That's right. um, where can we find your book and where can we reach you? Um, I have a website, www.iwillbethe1.com, and uh, you can purchase a book on, on my website. And uh, I live in Findlay, Ohio, okay. and I'm available to speak. Wonderful. Mike, thanks so very much for sharing your story and being brave enough to put it out there. Great. Thank you. All right. Back to you.
Thank you, Nancy. Exciting updates for you as our Spring to Life campaign continues. Almost to $40,000 out of the $50,000 goal. We first thank God as He guides us, He provides for us, and He does it through you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I want to thank the Millers from Van Wert for their gift, uh, the Passells from Upper Sandusky, and uh, Howard Smith from Elida. Thank you very much. I also want to thank Harold and Janet Merkel from Van Wert. Don and Shirley Ludke from New Bremen, and Cheryl Monas from Lima. Thank you so much. You Together we are reaching others for Christ, and we thank you for everything that you are doing. We thank you for your tax-deductible donation today or in the weeks to come as we continue to spring to life during our campaign. Thank you so much. They're powerful, they're amazing, and they love the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about the power team. Possibly you saw them when they came to the region Recently, well, your chance is coming up once again to watch them right here on TV44. The Power Team, live from Bluffton, will air May 2nd at 9 p.m. and May 3rd at 10.30 p.m. Also coming up, you can, especially this month, watch David Lawson, How to Prepare Yourself for God's Calling. I first saw this at the Converge Conference in, uh, here in Lima. It was incredible. Lawson works for Precept Ministries, which is Kay Arthur's ministry. The special program is going to powerfully talk to you about discipline and direction. Watch David Lawson May 6th at 10 p.m. and May 10th at 12.30 p.m. And here's a sneak peek of what you can look forward to. You must be like David a man, a woman of prayer. But notice, in the morning, I will order my prayer to you. Do you see the discipline? I will pray to you every day. I will not be caught without praying. I am seeking your face, God. Over and over and over in the book of Psalms, he is praying, he's praying, he's praying, he's talking to God. But did you notice what he called him? To you, O Lord, my King. Before we go, we want to remind you, you can contact, contact us at any time with your thoughts, prayers, ideas. Follow us on Twitter, Andy Lynch 44, Jen Beck 44, Mark Coons 44, or Bauer Z. On Facebook, you can connect with Andy Lynch or Jennifer. Remember, you can always call or email us with your prayer requests, 419-339-3000 or prayer at WTLW.com. For extra encouragement, go to the website, WTLW.com, for Andy's Points of Life devotional and Jennifer's One Minute of Inspiration. Remember, you can rewatch this edition of Faith and Friends and classic episodes from the past by visiting the website, WTLW.com. We have lots of classics, don't we? In the short three or four months of the show, it's great to see what God is doing through Faith and Friends. And great to see what God's doing in our Spring Life campaign through you. Carol Ringwald, thank you so much for your gift to us here at TV44. WTLW.com is a good place where you can go and give securely as well. Lots of churches have been giving. We're so thankful to that. Crossroads Church of God, Calvary Evangelical Church, County Line Church of the Brethren, just three of the 294 organizations and people that have given to the Spring to Life campaign. Uh, some of the other folks have already given, the Laymans in Lima, uh, Rita Schmitz from Ottawa, and uh, Glenn from Bluffton. I want to thank you for your gifts. And now we'll leave you with our scripture for the day, coming to us from Romans chapter 6, verses 8 through 11. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he gives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And as we continue, to live in the glory of Easter and that resurrection. We want to remind you that that gift of resurrection is yours as well. And if you have questions about that, you can always call us here at the TV station, 339-4444, or our prayer line, prayer at WTLW.com. It's not just open on Easter or Good Friday or the Lenten season. It's open all throughout the year, so give us a call. We want to help you in your spiritual journey, no matter where you're at. And that does it for us. For Mark Kuntz, Andy Lynch, Zach Bowers, Matt Finkel over there on our teleprompter and all the others that make Faith and Friends possible. We want to say thank you for joining us and have a great week.